Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this tutorial we're going to begin looking at vectors and we're going to start by looking at position vectors. Now what we have on the screen here is a set of Cartesian coordinates and by Cartesian coordinates we mean the standard XY coordinates and I have a point marked point P with the coordinates 3, 4 and just as a reminder when our coordinates are written in this way the 3 represents the distance along the x-axis and the 4 here represents the distance along the y-axis. So first of all we travel along and then we travel up. So along 3, up 4. Now when we talk about position vectors what we're referring to is the vector that connects our point to the origin. So we can sketch it on here. This line here represents the vector OP. And OP connects the point O to the point P, and that's the notation we use to represent that. So the position vector dictates the position of the point. A couple of other important things to remind you of, vectors have a magnitude and a direction. So as we look at that vector OP, we can see that it has a magnitude or a length, but it also has a direction determined by the angle here. Now if we wanted to determine the magnitude of that vector, then what we could do is use Pythagoras' theorem. And the notation that we use for magnitude is as follows. So we have OP the vector, and we have these vertical lines either side to represent the magnitude. So the magnitude of OP using Pythagoras' theorem, we can see that this is a right angle triangle. Now Pythagoras' theorem states that the square of the longest side equals the sum of the square of the two shorter sides. So in this instance, the longest side, or the hypotenuse, would be C. If we were to rearrange that, then the length of the longest side would just be the square root of the sum of the square of the two shorter sides. And we've seen this in earlier tutorials. Now using that fact for this position vector OP, we can write that OP, or the magnitude of OP, is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is the square root of 9 plus 16, or the square root of 25 in this case, and that is just going to be 5. So the magnitude of that position vector OP is just 5. But what we need to do is to consider things in three dimensions. And this time in three dimensions, our point P has the coordinates 3, 4, 2, where we've gone along 3 in the x-axis, we've gone up 4 in the y-axis, but we've gone back into the page 2 for our z-axis. So z represents into the page. Now we can still represent our position vector as the vector OP. And we can still determine the magnitude or the length of OP as follows. So our notation, OP, two vertical lines, one either side, this time equals the square root of our x component squared plus our y component squared plus our z component squared. So this time we have the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared. Well that gives us the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 4, which is the square root of 29, and as a decimal that equals 5.385. So the vector OP this time is slightly longer than previously, and that's because we're taking into account the fact that it's going back into the page. So let's consider another two position vectors. So this time we have two points. We have point A with the coordinates 1, 2, 3. So along 1 in the x-axis, up 2 in the y-axis, and then into the page 3 in the z-axis. And we have point B, which is along 4 in the x-axis, up 4 in the y-axis, and then along the z-axis, minus 5. Well, minus 5 in this case is going to be out of the page in this direction. 
But what we're also going to do is we're going to introduce some new notation. And for our new notation, we're going to use something called column vectors. So we have the vector OA, and the vector OA has coordinates 1, 2, 3. Well, when we write that as a column vector, we write it in this form here, 1, 2, 3. And all that means is that at the top of the column, we have our x component. Second in the column, we have our y component. And at the bottom, we have our z component. So it's just an alternative way of representing these vectors. We have the second vector there, OB. And the vector OB has the column vector 4, 4, minus 5. Now what we may want to do is we might want to find the vector between the points A and B. And the vector between the points A and B will be represented by A, B. Or think of this as going from point A to point B. And the arrow represents the direction that we're moving. Well, we've actually seen vector addition previously. And if we look at how these vectors work, we have a vector OA that connects the origin to A. We have a vector AB that connects A to B, like so. Let's just remove our z-axis for a moment. And the third vector that joins point O to point B is this vector here. Now from vector addition, we know that we've got two different routes where we can get from point O to point B. We could go directly from point O to point B. Or we could go from point O to point A, which is by traveling along the vector OA. And then we could travel along the vector AB. So we have two options. But what we can do is we can use that fact to find our vector AB. Because we can rearrange what we've just written there. And we can make AB the subject. And the way that we make AB the subject is by minusing OA from each side. So we can write AB, the thing we're trying to find, equals OB, the original left-hand side, minus OA. Now we have something we can work with because we've already said that OB is represented by the column vector 4, 4, minus 5. And we've already said that OA is represented by the column vector 1, 2, 3. Now by setting it out in this form, it makes things a little bit easier because we can only subtract x components from x components, y components from y components, and so on. So what we have here for our new x component is 4 minus 1. And for our y component, we have 4 minus 2. And for our z component, we have minus 5 minus 3. So we can determine our new vector. And our new vector, 4 minus 1, we've just said is 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. And minus 5 minus 3 is minus 8. So the vector between points A and B is 3, 2, minus 8. And in our x and y planes, we can visualize that because if we look where we are at point A, we need to travel along 3 in the x direction and up 2 in the y direction to get to B but we also need to travel out of the page by eight, represented by the minus eight at the bottom of the column vector there. Now the final step then, we may be asked to determine the magnitude of AB. And the magnitude of AB here is essentially the distance between points A and B. It's the same thing. It's the line that connects A and B. If we determine the magnitude of that, we're determining the length of the vector, which is also the distance between A and B. So let's do that now. We have the vector AB. We want the magnitude of that. And the magnitude of AB is the square root of the square of the x, y, and z components of that new vector. So we have 3 squared plus 2 squared plus, just take care here, it's minus 8 all squared. So that's the same as the square root of 9 plus 4. Well, minus 8 times minus 8 gives us plus 64. Therefore, AB 
is the square root of 77, which is 8.775. So in this video tutorial, first of all, we've looked at how coordinates on a Cartesian system can be linked to position vectors. And we've also looked at how we can determine position vectors and also the vectors connecting two points.